Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today, 31st of January 2024, is a sad day, because this might be the very last time that I bring you a review of a brand new Volkswagen Transporter T6.1. Already, Volkswagen has announced details of the T7, and normally, I'd be really excited about that. But as a T6 owner, I have my reservations because the T7 is a joint project with Ford and it will share a lot of the transit custom in its design and its features. Yes, they say it will be Volkswagenized, but let's see on that. So this is the end of an era. The end of an era that started in 1949 with the first rear engine Type 1 split screens. Since then, more than 12 million transporters have been built. And even this shape dates back to 2003, basically, in the form of the T5. Then the T6 came along in 2016 and the T6.1, this last of its type, if you like, in 2019. But this isn't your average T6.1. This is the Knaus Touravan 500 MQ Van Station. So this might be a sad day, but it's also a very exciting day because this isn't, as you now see, your typical T6.1 camper van. No pop top, not even a high top, not a panel van conversion at all. A proper compact coach built, a low profile motorhome from Knaus, one of the biggest German companies. In Germany, of course, they know the transporter as the bully. And well, this is such an iconic vehicle, but so few transporters over the years have become coach-built motorhomes. Now, back in the really early days of the Bay Window in the 70s, of course, there was the Jürgens Auto Villa from South Africa. It had the engine at the back, in the middle of the rear U-shaped lounge. Hmm, and the shower was cold water only. Yes, I tested one of those a long, long time ago. Then, in the days of the T3, Carmen in Germany did the gypsy, fabulous rear lounge coach built. Then there were auto sleepers, clubmans in the 90s on the T4. Carmen again with the T5, but more recently, there has been an absolute dearth, a complete absence of transporter based coach builts. And then, right on the last knockings of the T6.1, launched at the 2022 Caravan Salon Dusseldorf, comes this Touravan. And, as well, a Weinsberg equivalent, because Weinsberg is a sister company within the Knaus Tabert Group. Two layouts, a front lounge one, and this fixed bed model. Fixed bed model, the 500 MQ. And the Van Station bit, well, that means it's got more spec. So, time for some statistics on this little baby Knaus. Well, it's 5.89 metres long, pretty much a metre longer than a short wheelbase uh, transporter camper van. It's 2.95 metres high, nearly a metre taller than a pop-top VW, and 2.16 metres wide. So 26 centimetres wider than the van, but still quite slim for a typical low profile coach built. Normally they're around 2.3 or even 2.35 meters wide. You can appreciate that whereas a 2.16 meter body on something like a Fiat Ducato would have barely any uh, extra width behind the cab, here it is quite a noticeable gain in breadth of the vehicle. And Knaus have really neatly merged that in with these running boards under the cab doors. And then money. Well, list price on the Knaus website today for this van is £79,080. 
This one has just a few minor options on it because Van Station spec includes most stuff as standard. Total for this one, £81,148. But SMC Motorhomes just down the road from here in Newark, well, they have this particular vehicle on offer at the moment at £75,655. And where am I today? Well, of course, I'm back at Horton Waters, little farm CL site, just a few miles outside Newark. So the Tura van is big for a T6.1, but really quite small for a motorhome. And interestingly, at around 80 grand, it's similar money to something like a VW California Ocean. Well, coach belts always have been cheaper and easier to build. But like a California Ocean, this is a high spec VW. So you get those lovely 17 inch Devonport genuine VW alloys as standard, and you get the 150 horsepower engine too with the seven speed DSG automatic gearbox. And this is on the 3.2 ton chassis, the heaviest of the T6.1 transporter options. Uh, Knaus quote a mass in running order of 2,600 kilos. So that should give you a payload of 600 kilograms. Pretty good. You also get as a Van Station spec, well, a lot of extra kit. But the most noticeable features perhaps are the Thule Omnistor awning and the Oyster satellite dish, both included as standard. And all Tourer vans come in this Ascot grey finish for the whole body, cab and habitation. So now let's take a look at some of the other external features of this lovely looking little transporter. Well, the first thing you'll notice, of course, is these mirrors, and those might have given it away in that first clip where I tried to pretend that this was just another camper van. Well, these aren't your average T6.1 door mirrors. Habitation windows, well, unfortunately, they are the sort of caravan style ones that uh, stick proud of the bodywork. But the rest of it, I think, looks very smart. And then you've got some nice typical Knaus features like this service box. Your mains lead pokes up through the floor through this little flap so that you haven't got one of those flappy flappy plastic things on the side and well you wouldn't have a cold spot where there's a little extra hatch. In here also you've got access for filling and servicing of your fresh water tank so the fresh water tank is properly inboard for winterization. Also for winterization you've got the drain taps for your fresh and waste water tanks. The wastewater tank is actually underslung, um, but it is insulated. But the tank capacities are slightly disappointing. Only 65 litres for fresh and 58 for waste. Then moving back along the van, you've got your usual toilet servicing hatch, the vent for your Truma heating. Now that's a Truma Combi D4. So the four kilowatt version running off diesel only. Diesel only, not diesel and electric. And then of course, your door into the garage. And it does warn you not to have this door clipped open when the heater is running, because of course, the heat from that vent. Now, just before I go round and show you the back of the motorhome, should also perhaps comment on the rear axle, because we're so used to things like Ford Transits and Fiat Ducatos now with the wide rear axle and the rear wheels being right out in the rear wheel arches. Well here, they're tucked quite in. And we'll see later whether that has any effect on the way this little baby drives. Well, round the back and, okay, there's no window or anything, but I think Knaus have done a good job here. And for a start, they've got these very distinctive LED tail lights. They call them cat eye uh, lights in Knaus speak. And they've got those dynamic uh, indicators that sort of flash across like a posh Audi. 
you've got your reversing camera and your high level brake light, of course. It does seem quite low at the back, so you might have to be careful when boarding uh, some ferry ramps and so on. But also, you've got what Klaus calls its fold expand system, where this back panel, which often on a coachport motorhome would stick out proud of the rear panel, is actually inset. So none of this sticks out and adds to the length of the vehicle. And that, well, on other models, they say it creates about an extra 10 centimeters of internal space. And then, of course, you've got this garage, which is quite unlike anything you'd get in a normal VW camper van. Room for your bikes in here with headroom of 1.23 metres and width at floor level of 63 centimetres. You've got these adjustable lashing points on the floor level on both sides. You've got a main socket up there and a light at either end. And then this particular model also has a two-lay garage organization system, which gives you these additional securing points at uh, sort of halfway up the back wall and additional ones down here as well. And then a bag of straps and uh, a luggage retaining kit to just keep everything secure, stop it flying around as you drive, which seems a great feature. An extra 300 pounds for that. And then another 271 pounds for the external uh, shower back in this rear corner. Looking down the off side, of course, you've got your gas locker. Well, that just takes one six kilo cylinder, but as I say, hot water and heating are from diesel. And then you've got your habitation door, which has been upgraded here from the Knaus Comfort door that you get as standard to the Knaus Premium door. Now it's a 652 pound option, but it gives you the window, this umbrella holder, and a rather neat little shopping bag for you to take when you're out and about. Knaus branded, of course. And then the other option is this electric step. That's automatic retraction and it's 542 pounds extra. Frankly, I don't think you need it because the entrance is anyway really low. If I fold the step in, you can see, well, unless you've got mobility issues, it's really not much effort without it. The door also comes with the usual fly screen, but I don't want to let the heat out. I want to get inside, take my coat off, and hang it on these natty little hooks on the door. But actually, I'm not going to show you the living area yet. Because this is a VW, and so much of this tour van is about it being based on the T6.1, I'm going to take for a drive, first of all. So this is a really, really important part of this review because if the Touravan drove like a wobbly old shed, then there would be no point in it. No VW enthusiast would want one. But I have to say, despite that narrow rear track, despite the fact it's got so much more height, width and length than my own VW T6, it drives really, really well. Yes, there's a little bit of lean because, well, it is nearly three metres tall with that satellite dish included. But actually, it performs really well on the road. It rides well. There's hardly any conversion noise, no rattles. Um, it handles well, it feels stable, it feels like a T6.1. Okay, maybe a T6.1 that had an extra pie for dinner, um, but it still feels like a T6.1. 
and not only that, but it feel, it's, it's a very well-equipped cab too. You've got drowsiness detection, you've got the premium multifunction display uh, with Discover Media, SatNav, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, really crisp reversing camera through, again, through that uh, glass display. The seats are your usual T6.1 seats with um, height adjustment, with twin armrests, but not only that, but they're heated seats. Three stage heated seats, driver and passenger. And this 150 horsepower engine, well, I, I wondered how it would feel with all the extra weight and bulk to carry along, but it flew down the A1 yesterday. Um, absolutely no issues with sitting in the outside lane and passing the trucks. Now, we didn't have any strong crosswinds to deal with yesterday, but stability passing the HGVs was really, really good. So if you're a Volkswagen fan, there really aren't any great issues with driving this bigger transporter. Obviously, you're not gonna to want to use this uh, for picking the kids up from school or maybe going to do the shopping, but as, as a leisure vehicle, it's very comfortable, very easy to drive, very quiet. And of course, perhaps the icing on this very nice Gatto is the DSG box. I mean, that seven speed twin clutch transmission has always been a strong point of these VWs. And it's still probably the nicest of all automatics in light commercial vehicles. Such a shame that we're gonna lose that when we go to the new T7. And now, as we head back to Horton Waters, just want to highlight some of the standard spec on this uh, T6.1 as it nicely toasts my bottom. Well, you've got ESP as standard, you've got hill holder as standard, you've got automatic lights and wipers and high beam assist. You've got adaptive cruise control with the switches here on the steering wheel. And you've even got an inductive charging cradle for your phone. I don't think I've seen that ever on a T6.1 before. So it really is very well specced. So now to the living area. And well, the front seats spin round without having to open the doors and you've now got a half dinette lounge in typical continental motorhome style. Wall mounted table with this swing out leaf so you can comfortably reach your dinner if you're sitting in that rotated driver's seat. You've got a really, really big over cab sunroof, an opening one as well and a large hecky wind up roof light over the seating area. So it's a big light space. The unusual thing is that you step down from either the kitchen or the entrance area into this area. And there is this sort of slightly raised section of floor where if you're sitting in that corner, your feet will go down into a little recess. And I can only assume that that's some sort of um, part of the chassis underneath that requires that raised section there. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is that this is a comfortable space. You can sit here and the VW seats, of course, are just as good when you're on site as they are when you're driving. Sitting t here too, you've got perfect view of the 27 inch Avtex TV, which is again part of the Vansation package. Now that TV is quite high on the wall there, so it is a little bit like sitting at the front row of the cinema. Apart from that, well, the 
sort of locker space around the overcab. That's better thought out than many because you've actually got cupboards at the side, not just open recesses. And where they are recesses, they have got decent lips on them. So full marks to Knaus for thinking out the overcab area properly. No reading lights as such, but you have got ambient lights top and bottom over the top lockers and plenty of down lighters both over the window there and in the uh, roof area. So it's a well lit space as well. Sitting in the half dinette bench, you notice that the back is shaped to give you some lumbar support, so that's good too. And you've got a nice large side window as well as, of course, the window in that premium door. This bench gives you your two rear belted travel seats and although this particular tourer van has been specified as a two berth you can have a pull out bed either as a single or a double in the over cab area to make this more of a family vehicle if that's what you need. And then stepping up into the kitchen area well this perhaps is where it's most like a typical T6.1 camper van because you've got your Dometic combined uh, cooker and sink unit, just two burner hob and sink, although you have got hot water there. Um, your fridge is at the end of the kitchen, so you can just about access that through the door if you're sitting outside and having um, a nice warm al fresco dinner. Um, but the best bit perhaps is this area of worktop here. That's a good bit of preparation space. And then drawers too. Um, it looks like you've got three, but actually only two. Top one is set out for cutlery and utensils. And then there's another large drawer below that. What um, appears to be a third drawer is actually just a very small cupboard because I think there's wheel arch intruding into that space. What you have got in this vehicle is a real um, abundance of main sockets. One there, two there, uh, one up there by the TV, another one in the Luton, and one down on the front of the bench seat as well. Then if you're thinking about storage, well, you've got these top lockers, one big enough for cereal packets or my vital coffee machine, another for smaller items with a shelf, although that shelf is removable and it does have a lip on it too, so everything won't come flying out. Another top locker, of course, over the lounge and three more over the, over the bed on the back wall. And then you've got your wardrobe under the foot of the bed. It's rather shallow. You've got a shelved, shelved area at the side, not really long enough for things to hang properly, but it does have the Truma boiler underneath it, so everything will kept, be kept lovely and toasty warm, great in the winter. And if you're thinking, what about under the bench seat? Well, I'm afraid you won't find any storage there because that's where things like the leisure battery and all the habitation electrics are. While we're looking at under seat storage, or lack of it, one little detail annoyed me, and it's these plastic hinges. This one's already coming adrift, and well, in my experience, they don't last long before they break. Such a shame because the rest of this canal seems really, really well built. I think they're one of the leading brands for quality in mainstream motorhomes at the moment. Now, here's another luxury compared with small camper vans. You've got a fixed double bed at the back. Now, it's accessed using this very small fold down step. You'll certainly need to aim your feet carefully when you come back down in the night. But once you're up here, well, the bed's a slightly irregular shape, but basically it's 1.91 meters long. That's uh, six foot three. And then it's 1.5 meters wide at that end, 1.3 meters at this end. Four foot 11, narrowing down to four foot three. So it's a shame that Knaus has decided to put the reading lights at the narrower end of the bed. That seems slightly odd. Now, I think as standard, you only get one bedroom window. This one has two, but actually it would probably be better to have just one bedroom window and be able to sit up 
at that end of the bed and have the reading, have no window at that end, have the reading lights at that end and be able to comfortably sit up. But there is plenty of headroom to sit up, but the way it's arranged at the moment, you've got this shelf in the way. Again, you've got these nice reading lights, so why have the shelf there? It does seem, and they're touch on, touch off, which is very neat. Um, you've also got um, another main socket and USB, and even a switch to turn off the lounge lights. If you've got into bed and thought, oh, damn, I forgot to switch the lounge lights off. Of course, plenty of ventilation with windows at both ends of the bed, and then this opening roof light above as well. But this is where you really know that you're not in your average T6.1. You have a proper walk-in washroom, toilet room. Swivel cassette toilet. Now, I have to say that you need to check this out for size because with the door shut, my left knee is pretty much against the door when I'm sitting on the loo. There is just enough room for me to use it. I'm about uh, five foot 10, 1.77 meters tall. If you're very tall, you might really struggle, or if you're very large, you might really struggle in this space. It's not a big washroom, but it is a proper walk-in toilet and washing area. Not only have you got the swivel cassette toilet, but you've got a wash basin that slides out over the loo. Plenty of storage behind too, both with these little recesses and with a shelved, shelved cupboard behind the mirror. Roof vent above and down lights as well. But there's a further trick up its sleeve. Now I should add that there is more room to use the wash basin than there is to use the loo. Using the wash basin is quite satisfactory. And there's a clue to the next bit in the gaps in the wall. It's a shame there isn't a clip to hold this completely flat. But let's show you how this tiny washroom becomes a much bigger space with a separate shower. And first of all, you need to fold back a corner of the bed and just lift out that section of mattress. There's a catch to release, a handle to pull, and part of your bed has disappeared and become a shower cubicle. Who would have thought that this was possible in a T6.1? You've still got your toilet and basin. Basin slides out of the way when you're showering. Okay, there's a little bit of wheel arch intrusion, but it doesn't matter because this is a good size shower. Now, obviously, because of the way it works, you have to have separate screens, top and bottom, but, and it's a decent sized shower. Two drains, shower head that you can hand hold or clip to a riser bar. I mean, in a T6.1, wow. Just one last thing to show you before we sum up, and that's the blackout. Well, you've got a flat blind on the side window in the lounge and in the bedroom, and then a concertina blind on the kitchen window, on the door, and on the over cab sunroof. Then for the cab, well, for the side windows, you have these, well, just sort of cloth screens that magnetically attach to the frame around the window. Best to do that with the door open. You can do it from inside and just lean out, but you do need to have the door open to be able to get to the metalwork around the window onto which the magnets attach. And then for the windscreen, you have this concertina contraption. Now, you may have noticed these magnetic strips attached to the A-posts, and they are what this unfolding screen should attach to. Now, all starts off quite straightforward. 
just attach one side on there and then lean across and do the other side and then you find that the first side has come undone. Probably easier if there's two of you and one can hold one side while the other does the second side. It, it takes a bit of practice. I'm getting better at it. Um, and you do have to use the sun visors to hold them in place. Oh, it's reasonably effective blackout and it would be better if you took the centre mirror off because that's useless anyway with no back window. So, the Knaus Touravan 500MQ Vansation. Final verdict time. Is it Vansational? Well, it gets pretty damn close. What don't I like? Cab blackout. The small water tanks. The lack of central locking on the habitation door. But not much else. I love the way it drives. This is a T6.1 in motorhome form. What's not to like? So you love all the bits that are Volkswagen and then you love all the bits that are motorhome. Yeah, the washroom in toilet form is tight for space. That you have to bear in mind. But when it's extended into a shower cubicle as well, it's pretty impressive. And one person can still be asleep in bed as long as they're tucked up towards the back wall. There's plenty of room, there's a single bed there still. So there's some really clever design here. It just needs a bit of a catch on that uh, folding panel so that there isn't a, a gap at the side. I mean, it's not an issue in terms of water escaping when you're showering, but uh, it, uh, it doesn't look very neat as a toilet compartment. Yeah, other than that, quality is excellent and yeah, it's a really clever little compact motor. No, it won't suit everybody. Some people will want a better kitchen. They'll want a bigger washroom. They'll want a bigger van. But if you want a T6.1, maybe you're trading up from a pop top and you want more space. You want a bathroom. You want a fixed bed. Well, take a look at this while they're still around because I don't think they're going to be around much longer. I don't know how many T6.1s can else have got, especially right-hand drive ones. But if you love this van, my recommendation is to get in quick. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the channel, subscribing, and remembering to like our videos.